Hello friends, welcome to my first video on MapR. So this lecture series of tutorial videos will actually help you to understand MapR better and then help you to prepare for the certification exams. So the first thing I want to cover is storage pools. So as you know, MapR actually groups the disks and then make them into storage pools. And you should, the default value is make up of two or three disks to form a storage pool. And the stripe width parameter during your installation will actually, will actually let you to configure the number of disks per storage pool. Just remember, if one disk in a storage pool goes offline, the entire storage pool goes offline, which means all the data in the storage pool will get replicated somewhere else depending upon the replication factor you set and also the minimum replication factor that is set for the volume and each node in MapR cluster can support up to 36 storage pools and if you want to configure or manage the storage pools the command you have to use is mrconfig. So I'll give you an example. Let's say if you have 11 disks in a node, how many storage pool will be created by default, assuming you don't change the default stripe width? So the answer is, so you will have three storage pools of three disks each, which will come to nine disks, and one storage pool will be created with two disks each. Just remember, you have to group the disks together which has the same speed and same storage for maximum performance. And I would not recommend adding 11 disks in a storage pool unless you have a business use, different business use cases. Reason being, it will affect your performance. So let's go to the second question. So if you have nine disks in a node, how many storage pools will be created by default? So absolutely, there will be like three storage pools because each storage pool will have three disks each. So these are the ideal scenario. So if a node fails, if a node fails, MapR will not replicate the duck begin replication of data immediately the default time is one hour which can be configured however if a disk fails in a storage pool the entire storage pool is taken offline which means mapr will automatically trigger data replication just remember if you have more disks in a storage pool it then more data to be replicated which means it will have implication on your performance of the cluster so mapr actually ideally recommend three disks per storage pool just remember you need to have same size and disk drives same speed and same size disk drives in a storage pool for optimal performance and this is the other thing i really want to touch upon is what kind of services are running on which port? This is very, very critical to MapR. And as a MapR cluster admin, you have to know these ports. The first one is 8443, which is the MapR control system, which is the ideal console where as a MapR cluster admin, you will be spending your time with. And 9443 is the port where use it to install MapR and 8888 is for Hue, a visual GUI interface for Hive, Hive Metastore and 8041 is for Apache Droll. Just to test some functionalities and stuff like that, I use Apache Drill, but I would definitely recommend you to use Drill Explorer if you want to use Drill. And just remember, if you want to use Drill Explorer, you have to install uh, the Drill Explorer ODBC driver for Windows 
and also for Linux machines. Um, 7221 is for CLDB. It, it does give you a few lot of parameters to analyze. I really want you to check this port and then check the page and then it gets refreshed with a lot of details and stuff like that. And this is not covered in some courses as well. All right, this, this is the other thing I really want to go through with. First is, uh, what are the default settings in MapR? The first thing is, if a disk fails, then the data replication starts immediately. MapR will trigger data replication automatically and immediately. However, if a node that contains the disk fails, so it's not a disk failure, but a node failure, the data replication starts after an hour, 60 minutes by default. This can be configured as well. And if you take the node for maintenance, the default timeout is one hour after which the data replication actually starts. And when you do, when you take a node for maintenance, obviously you will use the timeout parameter and then let the mapper know how long this node will be unavailable for. So during that instant of time, mapper will not trigger a data replication. So if you really want to see what kind of uh, configuration you have, type the command mapper CLI config load and just remember it will just load all the uh, configuration parameters and you can use uh, pipe grep command to actually narrow it down to what kind of um, parameters you want to see um, and the other thing impo important thing to remember is if the C if the CLDB heartbeat is greater than five seconds an alarm will be raised and it must be manually created manually cleared and you have to investigate why there is um, why the heartbeat is greater than five seconds and remember the second there is there is a secondary CLDB in the node that will only perform read operations so in the next well in the next tutorial video I will cover about CLDB